Hey, what's going on? It's Jens. Today, we're going to focus on the perfect conditions to grow mushrooms. especially the CO2 level. Depending on the mushrooms you grow, there are some which need a lot of fresh air. And in today's video, we're gonna take a closer look what is actually happening when the mushroom got too much or not enough fresh air. And therefore, I have brought two examples. And this is a king oyster mushroom. And those mushrooms look totally different, but this is the exact same mushroom, the exact same strain, but just grown under totally different conditions. This started to grow in my fruiting tent at a very low CO2. And this grew in my garden. And as you can see, it developed huge caps and pretty short stems. And that is probably what you have read in books or heard in other tutorials. You need a lot of fresh air, otherwise you'll get those long stems. For the king oyster, that's perfect because the stems are kind of delicious. Now tonight I'm gonna to test one mushroom of each block just yeah, to tell you if there's really a difference in the taste of the caps or the delicious stem. I think it's basically what the customer, what you're expecting when you go into the supermarket and you'd see this mushroom, you probably think, mm, it looks just wrong and you won't buy it. So king oyster mushroom needs a high CO2 level. This means no fresh air at all. But why is the mushroom actually doing this? What, what, what's, what's wrong with the CO2 level? The answer is because normally the mushroom is looking for oxygen. And when there is no oxygen around, it just creates those long stems to reach for better environment. But when we want to grow king oyster mushrooms, we are interested in those long, big, fat stems. And yeah, that's just why we won't add any fresh air when growing this kind of mushroom. So as a conclusion, you need to ask yourself, do you want to grow big stems, then you need a lot of CO2, or do you want to grow big, fat caps, then you need a lot of fresh air. The recommended CO2 level for each mushroom is totally different. A lion's mane, for example, just needs between 500 and 1000. But when you think of growing oyster mushrooms, for example, the stems are not really delicious. You're just looking for the caps. So for the oysters, you need a lot of fresh air. What is this CO2 level actually? Normally, when you're outside, the CO2 level is about 400 ppm, 400 parts per million. When using a measuring device in your fruiting tent, which can be bought on Amazon for about 30 to 60 euros, for example, you can have full control about the CO2 level in your tent. For example, when I grew lion's mane or oysters, I had to replace the air like four times a day, of course, depending on the amount of bags you have in your grow tent. Example, I grew four bags of lion's mane in this tent. In the morning, I replaced the air, so the PPM was about 400. Four hours later, it was above 1000. That means I had to replace, or if I at least wanted to have no deformation on my mushroom, I had to replace the air like every four hours. Double the amount of bags, then I had to replace the air like every two hours. Then it can be very challenging to keep the humidity high. The whole day is like replacing the air, adding humidity, replacing the air, adding humidity. As our fruiting body needs oxygen to breathe, a high CO2 level is just an indicator for not enough oxygen in our tent. Maybe seen some lion's mane, which look really strange, or those ugly oysters with the long stems. And this is always, or most of the time, caused by a CO2 level which is above 1000. If you think this was helpful, or if you're interested in how to build a fruiting tent or a fruiting chamber, Please leave a comment below and maybe I'm gonna add some more tutorials on yeah, how my process, my gear to grow mushrooms at home. I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully see you in the next.